Buona per Arianna Milaso, podio femminile della gara digitale 2. Della gara 2 disputata in Giorgio Valenzia. Un applauso e ritroviamo tutti i protagonisti dei giorni di Sassari. Welcome to the Mazzano World Circuit, Marco Simoncelli for this second race of the weekend for the Euro Series, but over the 10th race of the season. We are here on the 4.2 kilometre challenge, just on the coast outside Rimini, on an absolutely beautiful day, 50 minutes of action ahead of us. It's a warm welcome from myself, Ben Evans, as the cars are poised on the grid, ready to go. Let's head down to the grid now and get a little bit of pre-race build up. Si fiametta, questo è il penultimo appuntamento per quanto riguarda il campionato Euro Sires, un campionato completamente nuovo, l'organizzazione tutta italiana fa capo a Nova Race, qui ho le Isisa Maioli, team principal di Nova Race, vi siete inventati nel 2011 la Ginetta G50 ma poi quest'anno vi ci avete allargato a diverse tipologie. Sì, buongiorno a tutti, buongiorno Camilla. Abbiamo allargato a nuove vetture nella stessa gamma di performance. I risultati del weekend, soprattutto di ieri, confermano che il balance of performance è fatto correttamente. È una cosa difficile da ottenere, ma di molta soddisfazione e i risultati lo hanno confermato. Sono stata col fiato sospeso effettivamente ieri perché c'erano vari gialli pre-gara, avevamo per esempio la Lotus con un problema forse elettronico, forse meccanico risolto un po' all'ultimo, avevamo Frederick Blomstedt con un problema fisico, non stava tanto bene, eravamo terrorizzati, arriverà l'apertura della finestra, dovrà fermarsi prima con una penalità, avevamo Mark Speaker Wars con un incidente in moto ormai quasi dieci mesi fa però ancora un po' infortunato c'è la tantissime parata. cose Elisa sì. ti interrompo perché voglio soltanto fare una battuta con il vincitore di ieri l'eroe di Spa eh, Pavel Lefferon congratulazioni come sfrutterai questa polla? Eh, provo di fare la partenza abbastanza bene no? come quella di ieri e fare il massimo e prendere il massimo di quello weekend in bocca al lupo dalla griglia è tutta a te fiammetta Uh, very very impressive indeed from Leftroff he was chased in the early stages by Oliver Framuth there is Framuth in the McGann Trophy car so they're shown the one minute board but the German driver having uh, stayed with Leftroff and really closing up onto his tail in the early stages then fades second half of the race here how they're lapping for then Pavel Leftroff in pole from Oliver Framuth then it's Luke Manoni and Mark Spakevoss from Manuel Lozani and Claudio Giudice, Marco Stangas, Roberto Gentili, then Barry Baxter and Stefano Stefanelli, and Avaio Konev and Tiziano Fratza completing the field. It's a 50 minute race. There is, of course, a mandatory pit stop, which comes from the 20 minute until the 30 minute point of the race, and it is, as ever, a rolling start. Leftroff leads the field away on this pace lap. The last opportunity to get a sense of the track conditions, which of course are very, very different to those which the drivers enjoyed in yesterday's night race. Leftroff victorious in the last three outings in the Euro Series by Nova. Dominant double at Spa Frankov Short. Will he make it four on the bounce? There is Manuel Lozani, who had a fantastic start to yesterday's race and got very much into the mix. The other car to watch for, which certainly after the first couple of laps, is going to be Claudio Giudice. There he is 
in the white Maserati and Giudice just took a couple of laps to get the heat into the tyres as he wanted to yesterday and thereafter was really challenging so that is going to be his aim for today. Mark Spekovos in the black number 10 car another to watch for not least because uh, he and Giampiero Cristoli making a very good driver pairing in race one. There is Barry Baxter in the Maserati which he is sharing with Alessandro Fogliani. The field heading down towards the hairpin which represents the midpoint of the lap. It's also where we saw the bulk of the overtaking in yesterday's race. Plenty of space to the inside of the road but as you can see the accumulation of marbles on the track from what has been an incredibly busy weekend racing here at Mazzano. So there is a little bit of grip to the inside, also a very forgiving runoff area as well. It's the black Evora of Left Rolf Elisfield, then it's the white and blue Megane trophy car of Oliver Frame. With the next row is going to be the orange Ginetta of Luca Manoni, the black Ginetta of Mark Speckvoss. Then we're on to Manuel Lozani, he is in the pink and the white Maserati of Claudio Giudice. There is Manuel Lozani. The other car to watch for is the red number 15 machine of Marco Heatherstangas. He and Frederick Blomstead, a little bit muted, one could argue, in yesterday's race, particularly as they have been assistant front runners throughout the course of the season. So they will be looking as best they can to fight their way up through the pack also Roberto Gentini another of the red cars that time number seven another driver who we have seen in contention for podium places on more than one occasion through the course of the season the field now heading through the sequence of ever tightening right handers that take them towards the tight right hand hairpin for the brace of left hand flicks that complete the lap and Again, another very good overtaking opportunity here into the hairpin. The field beginning to form up side by side, getting ready for the rolling start. This the penultimate race weekend of the year for the Euro Series by Nova. Next stop is Mugello in mid-October. As pace car just bunching the field nicely. 50 minutes of action and entertainment about to get underway very, very shortly. Will it be Pavel Leftroff or Oliver Framuth? who gets the jump into the first turn. We will find out as now the safety car peels off into the pit lane. It's the responsibility of the Black Evora of Pavel Leftroff to pace the field. Eyes to the gantry. We wait for the red lights to change, which they do now. And away we go for the 10th time this season in the Euro Series by Nova as the field sprint towards the first turn. It's been a great start as well from Giudice in the Maserati who looks to the outside challenges Spekovos for third place. It's left off from Oliver Framer, then Mark Spekovos, Giudice in fourth. Luca Magnoni was in fifth, but he has been pushed down by a fast starting Roberto Gentili, also a very fast starting Mavero Sonev as well. In fact, Spekovos looking to the inside of Oliver Framer and forcing his way past them again as they jink through this tight, twisty technical section to open the lap before then the road opens out on the long run to the hairpin. Pavel Leftroff already breaking clear from Mark Spekvoss. Then we've got a challenge now from Claudio Giudice. Looks to the inside of Oliver Framer. McGann attempts to defend. The gap just about closes. For a moment there, as if Giudice may have had his nose chopped. Fortunately, they avoid contact. And then it's a little bit of a gap back to Roberto Gentili. We have got then the white orange car of Iosanov next behind. And as a result, it really is. Look at no news. Come off worse from this. He has slipped a long, long way down the order. He has got Manuel Lozani just in behind him. So with the exception of left off, the field running as a continuous train all the way along the back straights. Pikovos defending from Framuth, who looks to wind up the pace in the McGann. And this is one of the sections of the circuit where the McGann would have the advantage over the Ginetta. Speaking of Ginettas, darting to the inside. It's Frederick Blomstead, he makes contact and around goes Manuel Lozani. And Lozani punched into the spin there. It was Marco Heather-Stangas, in fact, at the wheel of the 15 car, who looked for a gap that was never there. He was busy battling Stefano Stefanelli. 
and that is a great shame. Contact for Heather Stangas and uh, well, Lazani. Lazani picking up some bodywork damage through his car as well. Now let's have a look here. Marco Heather Stangas, no damage it would appear to his vehicle. Another look at it, it was the passing move on Stefanelli. The gap closed and disastrously for Heather Stangas. Lazani moved across to this piece of road, exactly where Heather Stangas wanted to put the car. The Finnish driver really struggling to get the car stopped in time. Nothing malicious about it. Fortunately, it's a rotation out of contention early on for Manuel Lazani. Meanwhile, at the front of the field, the left off, it's got Mark Spekovos coming up onto his tail. Then it's frame with Angelice. Then a gap in the traffic to Luca Magnoni, who moves to the inside of Roberto Gentili up into fifth position. It's been a much better second lap of the race than it was a first lap of the race for. Luca Magnoni. Meanwhile, the battle continuing a little bit lower down the order between Marco Stangas and Stefano Stefanelli. Stefanelli, the sky blue car, they're all in this train running together. The Genesis, the sunshine shimmering off them. Then we've got Barry Baxter just in behind Stefanelli. There is Barry Baxter, who is a pretty regular fixture in the Trofeo Maserati World Series. They're all boxed in here behind Roberto Gentili, the first of the Reginettas. Then we have got Marco Helestangas, finished graduate of the GT3 Porsche Racing. And then we have got Stefano Stefanelli, Barry Baxter, looking to stay with them. Meanwhile, Claudio Giudice has just got back from that fight second place, which is a little bit of a surprise possibly, because I'd have thought Famous and Spikvos be slowing themselves down just a little bit. So we're in to lap three. Pavel Leftroff leads the way and is really looking to build his advantage as contact between Framuth and Spikvos, and it's Oliver Framuth who rotates in the McGann. Now what happened there? We'll find out in due course. That promotes everybody up from Claudio Giudice onwards. Here is another look at it. Framuth to the inside of Spekovos. Spekovos turns across and I'm not sure he really saw the McGann was there. They sideswipe into each other and it's the German driver Oliver Framuth who is tipped into the rotation. Meanwhile, Stefano Stefanelli all over the tail of Marco Hellestangas. Hellestangas using the road a little bit more out onto the kerb but he's left a gap to the inside. There is Stefanelli poised to take it of it and there you see the McGann of Framuth who has rejoined behind Barry Baxter. Framuth has lost about seven places as a result of that spin. It's all very good news for Pavel Leftrov. For Mark Spekovos though the inspection of his mirrors continues. His next challenger is Claudio Giudice and Giudice having seen the instant unfolding in front of him will know to apply a degree of caution when trying to overhaul Spekovos as they roll towards the end of lap three. A pair of them bring through the final left-hander, roll on their way along the start and finish straight into the opening sequence of turns. Meanwhile, we have got Everybody looking to challenge into the chicane further back. Oliver Framuth darting to the inside of Harry Baxter. Baxter having absolutely none of it. And in turn, trying to find a way past Stefano Stefanelli in seventh place. They're all bottled up by Marco Heather Stangas. As Stefanelli looks to the inside of Heather Stangas. And this time there's nothing that the Finnish driver can do to defend. But he hopes that Stefanelli runs wide. That's exactly what happens. And this is brilliant racing. As Stefanelli still side by side with Heather Stangas. Now makes the move stick. Barry Baxter also looks to try and fashion a gap. They're almost three wide, four wide, coming down the back straight. Brilliant, brilliant racing hit. It's Baxter to the inside. He gets past both Ginettas. Framuth to the inside of Heather Stangas is able to ease past him, but not Stefanelli just yet. I suspect that will follow very, very shortly. Framuth sees a gap into the right-hander. Oh, and he's squeezed again by Stefano Stefanelli. Stefanelli pushed out wide and that might cost the Italian because it means that Heather Stangas can now look to immediately challenge him as they roll along the back straight. The two Ginetta G50s running absolutely in tandem with each other and it is just jinking to the inside. 
Marco Heather Stangas, but Stefanelli carrying the momentum through the right handers makes sure of the position as they then get on the, the brakes for the hairpin. Stefanelli slow in the rear of the car. So here is another look at how it all unfolded. Stefanelli goes to the inside of Heather Stangas. Heather Stangas looks to fight back immediately, but as they slow themselves down, it brings Barry Baxter and Oliver Framuth into the battle as well. That's to the driver who was first able to benefit, and Framuth really would have made far more ground, but for the fact the road in front of him was completely blocked out. Into the pits and out comes Marco Heller Stangas. And I wonder if that was possibly the result of a judicial proceeding relating from that contact with Manuel Lasagne. Pavel Leftroff then our race leader as eight minutes in. Second place is Mark Spakos. Third place is Claudio Giudice. Fourth place is Luca Manoni. And it's Manoni who is closing up very rapidly on this fight for second position. Fifth place for Roto Gentili and sixth is Barry Baxter. Back to the action and now we have got Giudice clear ahead of Spekovos now. Will Claudio Giudice be able to break away from Spekovos? We saw the mistake from the Ginetta driver just before we went down to the pit lane. It has translated in Giudice being able to ease away. I think the big unknown here is probably the progress of Luke Manoni. Here's another look at it then. Spekovos nowhere near the apex, out onto the marbles, no traction. Giudice able to ease through. Very straightforward passing move for him. Our through penalty board is out and showing, for whom we know not, as Pavel Leftroff continues to lead the way from Giudice. Then it's Spekovos in third place. Luke Magnoni in fourth. Magnoni already closing up on to Mark Spekovos. First, it's having to serve this race and absolutely battle by one, two, lap six. Fifth place, then we've got Roberto Gentili. Oliver Framuth, there he is in sixth place. Now he is 10 seconds away from this scrap for second place. How quickly can he close that gap down? Certainly, with 40 minutes or so, you would suspect that that is more than ample time for him. As they work their way through the hairpin at the bottom end of the back straight then it's another hairpin double apex right hander really we've already seen plenty of drama through the sequence of turns before it feeds them on to this long run ready Giudice moving away from Mark Spakovos Spakovos though doesn't really can to stay with him but he's got Luke Manon bottled up behind him and certainly Based on the pace that we saw in yesterday's night race, you would be expecting it's probably going to be advantage Magnoni sooner rather than later, as the pair of them get on the brakes and head on to the sequence of left-handers that concludes the lap. Of course, these used to be the opening turns on the lap here at Mizano, and it's the drive-through penalty. In fact, for Mark Spakovos. So did he achieve that? Of course, it was that contact with all of the frame move. Mark Spakovos rolling down the pit lane, having picked up the drive through penalty, enormously frustrating for him. Here's how it happened Spakovos turning across. He just had the McGann, I think, in his blind spot because it was most unusual to see a car turning in like that to defend a corner if they don't know that their rival's there, as there was absolutely nothing framework could have done. Meanwhile, some great scrapping going on behind us. Roberto Gentili, who seems to have been shuffled through a pack of cars, and has now got Stefano Stefanelli buzzing around on his tail as they are very shortly about to embark on the run down a long straight in the middle lap. Here they come. The framework has raced his way through this group. He's passed Barry Baxter. Baxter in turn has got Gentili just behind him. Then Stefano Stefanelli, who's looked racy. Not really on, on pure pace, being able to find a way past the cars in front of him. He's certainly more than able to stay with them. Into the tight double right. And then this very, very fast, exhilarating section. The right-handers just steadily tighten. Consistency. 
smooth steering input absolutely key on this section of the lap at the moment everything is working exactly as should for the cars in this group although Stefanelli thinks about a little look to the inside into the hairpin no way through there for Stefano Stefanelli more into the left hander and this can be always the real challenge when you've got these cars which are very even in terms of their preparation the balance of performance between the different marks within the Euro Series Bonova as well is such that over a single lap there's very very little to choose between them as they turn through the opening chicane back from Stefano Gould another good group of cars now here comes Mark Spekovos looking to the inside of Ivo Sonev Spekovos Going for a move, has to take a lot of the curb to make it stick, but he does it, finds a way briefly past the Bulgarian, then snaps sideways and very nearly tags Spekovos. And Mark Spekovos, I don't think, will realise until he watches the race back just how lucky he was then, because he very nearly got sideswiped by Ivano Sonev. Sonev now under immediate pressure as well from Manuel Lezanyi. Now here's another look at it, Spekovos using all the curb on the way in. Sonev sticking with him. Spekovos struggling to slow the car down, so Sonev sees the gap, goes for it just wriggles sideways looks very spectacular from that angle fortunately they are all able co to continue on their way so here is Alden Freymuth he is well clear of that drama you just wonder though how quickly maybe the Baxter Gentili and Stefanelli group is going to be caught by the likes of Spekovos Manuel Lozani, certainly in terms of qualifying pace, you'd expect to see them reeling them in, possibly to the tune of two seconds a lap or thereabouts. As again, Stefanelli looks to the inside of Roberto Gentili. Gentili moves across, defends the line just in the nick of time. They are about to conclude another lap, and it really is those heavy braking zones where Stefanelli seems the most confident. That's where he's really able to push look to try and force his way past. All the while, though, Barry Baxter not exactly romping through. We've got a black and white warning flag, as I would imagine it's possibly for Mark Spakenboss for track limits. And he had all four wheels well and truly over the edge of the track when he was able to uh, jink through and make that pass on Ivo Sonev. Again, Stefanelli into the heavy braking zone, looks at the inside of Gentili, almost takes to the grass. Roberto Gentili absolutely determined not to give the place to Stefano Stefanelli. Stefanelli instead will look to regroup his efforts. Meanwhile, it has now all gone wrong for Ivo Sonev. Around he goes. Has that just about come to a halt shy of the gravel trap? So, be it with some pretty flat spotted tyres, he should be back into the action. We're on the ninth lap of the tenth race of the season in the Euro Series by Nova, Pavel Leftrov leads from Claudio Giudice. Mainoni and Oliver Freymuth in fourth position. We've got lots of quick cars out of position. Mark Spekovos, Manuel Lozani, Marco and Stangas all instigators or victims of early contact. They will be attempting to climb up through the order in the remaining 34 and a half minutes. Thank you very much for joining us here in Mazzano this weekend. Again, Stefanelli looks the inside of Roberto Gentili. He fires through. Oh, he's going to run out of road and very, very nearly finds himself in the gravel trap. And so all of that hard work from Stefano Stefanelli, he is going to have to repeat. Another look at it. Gentili gave him the room. He knew that Stefanelli had absolutely no hope in the car, even halfway close to being stopped. Just lets him run wide. Rolls to the inside and everybody gets through safely. Here is our race leader, Pavel Leftrov. He led every single lap of yesterday's race and he is pretty much on course, at least in these early stages, to do the same again today. He's been helped enormously by that contact to an older frame of and Mark Spakerboss because it's taken two of the principal rivals out of contention. They're both still running time deficit they've got to make up is absolutely immense. I've got a feeling that it would take a safety car or something of a disaster through the pit stop cycle to uh, get in the way of Leftrov's charge. 
speaking of the pit stops, we are just three minutes away from the 10 minute pit window opening, which will take us through the middle stages of the race. We've left off lapping just under one and three quarter minutes as a lap time for the Bulgarian driver. Yesterday's race we saw him leaving it until pretty late in the pit window before making his mandatory pit stop. I wouldn't be unsurprised if he does exactly the same again today. As through goes left off. In pretty much splendid isolation at the front of the field. Oh, Giudice chasing him see 8.6 seconds back and there you see the advantage left off over Giudice and now Claudio Giudice under pressure from Luca Mainoni. Mainoni looking to challenge to the inside into the hairpin can't quite do it it's all over the tail of the Maserati and this is really the joy of multi-mark racing Maserati is so formidable in a straight line the Ginetta arguably just a little bit more nimble and agile through the turns, possibly a little bit later on the brakes as a result. Giudice able to just build a little bit of a buffer along the straight, then be through the twisty stuff. The Ginetta of Luca Mainoni may be able to close the gap down. We head into the heavy braking zone for the hairpin, right at the bottom end of the circuit. Around the pit complex through to the conclusion of the lap, and Luca Magnoni poised, swarming all over the tail of the Maserati. But at the moment, Claudio Giudice, I don't think, will be unduly worried. Magnoni, although he's been on his tail, hasn't really quite been able to force a way through. But what they'll be more concerned about there in the background is the resurgence of Oliver Framuth. And Framuth, pleased to see, suffering no ill effects in terms of damage from that contact with Mark Spekovos being helped enormously by this battle between Giudice and Luca Magnoni, and as the pair of them fight, it is going to allow the McGann to close the ground down a little bit more rapidly than he would perhaps otherwise have been able to do. And there is a question mark here about whether or not it would be prudent for either Luca Magnoni or Claudio Giudice to peel into the pits at the end of this lap as the pit window opens because that would bring them out of this, this battle, certainly for Luca Magnoni in terms of pace in clear air. You'd suspect he'd be able to get the jump on the Maserati if he can undercut him through the pits. It might also give Magnoni a fighting chance of keeping all the frame with the bay. That is always the joy of these mini enduro races is when those strategic calls start to come into play and unwind themselves through throughout the race. We're only a couple of turns away from getting to the conclusion of the lap. Both Luca Mainoni and Claudio Giudice racing the full 50 minutes as solo drivers. Mainoni just using a little bit more of the road than he would have wanted coming out of the hairpin. Now, is he going to duck into the pits? Yes, he is. No surprises there. So he's going to look for the undercut on Claudio Giudice, the Maserati continues onward and continues to be closed in by the frame with meanwhile into the pits as well. Our race leader Pavel left her off. And so the Lavto racing team deciding that discretion is better part of Valor get the pit stop out of the way early on. And then Pavel can just have that clear run through to the flag. As a result of all of that, it promotes Claudio Giudice into the lead of the race. There is Luca Magnoni, his pit stop well in train. I just wonder whether or not Claudio Giudice will be called in by the Scuderia Giudici team at the end of this lap to, to try and stem the flow, possibly, of the, the undercut from Luca Magnoni whether or not they're going to keep him out there because he's got no traffic to concern himself with he can just worry about lapping consistently meanwhile Mark Spakovos is out of the number 10 car he will hand that over to Giampero Cristoni Cristoni was very impressive in the night race yesterday 
Lecce coming towards the end of the lap. Though frame is looming with intent, he's not really closed the gap enormously over the past couple of tours. Uh, and it shows really the, the disbenefit of engaging in battle with each other. Once you start taking those defensive racing lines moving too much to the inside of the road, that's when it can really hurt you. Meanwhile, Pavel Leftrov is released post pit stop. And he has been fed out into a nice piece of empty tracks. So that is good news for Leftrov. Because yesterday we saw immediately post pit stops that several of the front runners have been caught up a little bit with some of the back markers into the pit lane. Now comes Claudio Giudice. So exactly as we surmised might be the case, the Maserati rolls in. Claudio looks to rehydrate and have a left off essentially as he's out on the far side of the circuit is racing a car that he can't see in the pit lane. Also into the pits comes Barry Baxter and he is going to hand over to Alessandro Fogliani. So Fogliani jumps in to the Maserati. As Pavel Leftrov continues on his way. Now, what is the progress in the pits? The wonder of Claudio Giudice is this going to be enough for Leftrov to comprehensively get the jump in? He was leading by about eight seconds pre pit stops. Couldn't quite get a sense of whether or not he got dispatched from the pits in good order by the team, but I suspect the answer is that he did. And the Balavto Racing Lotus Evora accelerates through, and there, indeed, rolling out of the pit lane, would appear to be Claudio Giudice, so Abba Leftrov has done enough through the pit stops, it would appear, to have maintained the lead of the race as we are approaching half-race distance here in Mizano. And it is Leftrov who is essentially our race leader once the pit stops are cycled through. There is Luca Magnoni. Magnoni has got the jump over Claudio Giudice, so it's worked for the Nova Race team because they knew that Magnoni was losing time behind the Maserati. All it has taken is one strong outlap from Luca Magnoni, and he has now got the jump over Claudio Giudice. Now, what can Giudice do to uh, try and fight back for Pavel Leftorov. Still needs to maintain a degree of pace as into the pits comes Roberto Gentili. The bottle of uh, mineral water is very uh, welcome. Stefano Stefanelli hopping out of the Ginetta and into his place goes Giagua. Giagua into the number four Ginetta as Pavel Leftrov continuing to really dominate at the front of the field. Be a very, very impressive fourth win in a row if he were indeed to take the flag today. Pavel Leftrov coming to the end of another lap then, and this is very, very impressive from the Bulgarian driver. Just under 24 minutes remain here in Mizano, the second race of the weekend for the Euro Series by Nova. And it's Pavel Leftrov who is in command and romping away at the very front of the field. Aided a little bit by instance behind him in the early stages. But now for left off, it is a case of just how smoothly you can keep the car ticking over through to the flag. You, you do suspect that barring some sort of mechanical disaster, it is very hard to see anybody but the Bulgarian coming through and taking the chequered flag. Behind, though, I think we could be in for uh, plenty of intrigue. More news and insight from the pit lane. I think plenty of talking points from the early stages. A little bit of contact, of course, that we were seeing. And that has possibly left one or two somewhat frustrated drivers. So we have left 
Kovrov already about to reel off another lap. Pit window, of course, is still open. It's open until there's just 20 minutes left on the race clock. Um, so if Pavel left her off, his pit stop out of the way early on. While here is Giampiero Crestoni looking to find a way past Roberto Gentili. And no problems there whatsoever for Crestoni. The place gained. He is left with plenty to do after the indiscretion earlier on from Mark Spakovos. That contact with Oliver Framuth. Which uh, saw sort of Framer spinning down into ninth place. It meant that Spakefoss earned a drive through penalty. And that rather put he and Crestoni out of uh, contention at the sharp end of the pack. The left drop fairly shortly is probably going to get himself in amongst a little bit of the traffic. Not quite as daunting as it was during yesterday's night race but nonetheless is going to be uh, very tricky for him nonetheless so here is the order then as we're on to lap 16 Pavel Leftrov leads it from Oliver Framuth then it's Luca Magnoni Paolo Giudice is fourth Gimpero Cristoni in fifth Roberto Gentili is in sixth position and Framuth just 6.2 seconds back from Pavel Leftrov Leftrov can't completely ease off the pace as he did but you can get a sense though that it's still a very very significant advantage for the Bulgarian Evora driver more debriefing of the race going on from pit lane as Pavel left her off leans through the left-hander so Bayou Sonev who is up the road ahead of him and Sonev we had that big big spin earlier on thereafter just begun to slip towards the tail end of the field he'll probably be lapped not on this occasion certainly next time round by Pavel Leftrov Leftrov Still enjoying driving through the uh, aerodynamic grip of the Aurora. Just likes to get the feel of the car moving around underneath him as he sprints long straight on the brakes to the hairpin, down through the gears. As the pit lane is closed. We hit 60% race distance. This Mazzano circuit, lovely smooth track surface that of course, of course, really better known for uh, having been a long time home of the World Superbike Championship and, and recently MotoGP racing as well. Now, what has happened to Oliver Framuth? Because the last time we saw that classification, he was just five seconds back from Pavel Leftrov. He has now dropped some way back. There is Roberto Gentili, Frederick Blomstead down in 10th place taken over from Marco Hellestangas. Can Giampiero Cristoni do? He's first of all really got to uh, make sure he pulls clear of Gentili, but Gentili is uh, sticking with him for the time being. As they head through this sequence of right-handers, circuit surface absolutely immaculate. And it's a nice wide track as well, flat curbs, really something the drivers can tackle there. That's interesting. Cristoni maybe taking a little bit of a tighter apex into the head and he just wants to make sure that Gentili doesn't get even a sniff of an opening to look to try and challenge and find his way past. Ginetta picks up the pace coming out of the left hand and accelerates past the pit box is already moving across to the left hand side of the circuit. That's to set up for the right hand chicane but again Cristoni just moving across turning in a little bit earlier. Meanwhile, here is Ivayo Sonev, another big spin for the Bulgarian. And once more, slightly anxious for Pavel Leftrov, happening in very close proximity to the race leader. So this is the best battle in the race. It's for fifth and sixth place. They are 20 seconds behind Claudio Giudici. So no particular concern there. Now, this we missed a moment ago. Cristoni running wide with the 
turned into the opening she came very, very early. And not unsurprisingly, the car then understeering and refusing to move to come back across and take the apex as just running out a little bit wide again is Gentili. This is the fight for fifth and sixth place. It is also the fight for second and third in the ES class as well. They have got the recovering of Iosonev as their next on track target, which is just uh, maybe a level of distraction that they could possibly do without. Meanwhile, here is the fight for second and third place. Oliver Framuth has found a way past Luca Mainoni, so Framuth up in second place. Mainoni staying right with him, though, in the orange net of the pair of them pound past the pit bulls. They've got Claudio Giudici as well, trying to close up on to their tail. Here is another look at it. Framuth to the inside of Mainoni. Very fair drive from Luca Mainoni, deciding not to unnecessarily dispute it and cause contact. And frame with able to sneak away past. Then Mainoni immediately back onto his tail. This could be quite entertaining because the Ginetta is really agile through the corners. And again, very quick on the straights. And we're coming on to probably the longest pure straight on the circuit now. Down this back stretch. Mainoni contemplating a little bit of a look to the inside of Oliver Framuth into the hairpin. Framuth having absolutely none of it. Sticks to his own line, does his own business. And it's just able to ease away. So we've got just under 16 minutes left in the race. And here is our race leader, Pavel Lefterov. This is a lot more comfortable for Lefterov possibly than yesterday's race was because the, the night race always will present challenges of its own. We return to the action and it is 15 minutes and 20 seconds left on the clock. There is our race leader, Pavel Lefterov. Here comes the fight for second place because all of the frame with has not shaken off Luca Mainoni. They've got Claudio Giudice just in behind them, but Giudice not able to close in perhaps as much as he would like to. And with Mainoni still separated by under half a second. The challenge here for Luca Mainoni is going to be where can he play to the strengths of the Ginetta to try and force his way past them again at the same time. On the frame will just be mindful about points around the circuit where he needs to work the hardest to where he can possibly afford to take it a little bit easier. We are on to the 20th lap of the race as well. And despite the pair of them frame with Mahoney battling, Claudio Giudice not really closing up onto their tail and nor is the battle between Gian Piero Cristoni and Marco Gentili. In fact, if anything, that Roberto Gentili rather than in fact Roberto Gentili slipping back. In seventh place is Giagua. In eighth place, we've got Sandro Fogliani. Ninth place, Manuel Lozani. And tenth is Frederick Blomstead. And this has been a good lap for Oliver Framuth. He has just really begun to, uh, to break the pressure now from Luca Magnoni. Magnoni, having started the lap half a second adrift from the Gant, is now uh, appreciably closer to a second, if not a little bit over that possibly as they come to the end of it. So we're on towards the final turn for Oliver Framuth. He swings around the left-hander, breaks the timing beam and cross line he comes. And only still there or thereabouts, but for the first time there's just that chink of daylight, that couple of car lengths between the two leaders. Them. Swing through this tight, twisty technical section to start that. Then we have this left hand kink, not unlike actually the, the kink of Paul Ricard, which takes them on to the Mistral straight there. This obviously is slightly shorter straight, but it presents an equally good overtaking opportunity. As Frame with Magnoni arrive into the hairpin for the 21st time, neither of them likely to change position. 
Alba left her off, which is beginning to uh, contemplate a bit more traffic. That is Tiziano Frazza, who is ahead of him. You can see a long way distant in the background frame of Amainoni for Pavel left her off. This is once more another reasonably comfortable race. Actually, the weekend playing out in a very similar way to how it did at Spa. Insight from the pit lane then as we pick up with the race leader. Have a left off 12 minutes remaining. He closes further still onto the tail of Tiziano Frazza. And left her off. Just managing the pace very, very nicely. will be a little bit concerned possibly with, uh, with getting in amongst the traffic because that is uh, really the great unknown. If you have a left drop, once you're, you've got an advantage like this you just want to, uh, to go to run your own race with traffic to uh, contend with. You're slightly at the mercy of the drivers around you whether or not they're going to make mistakes and light headlights flashing from left drop but he eases past Tiziano Frazza no problems there and it also means that left off has now got one of the more challenging sections of the circuit both in terms of the, the angle of the turns and, and the velocity at which they are negotiated without any form of distraction in terms of cars heading on the road as we are approaching 80% race distance. Lefteroff in the Avora to finish another lap. Meanwhile, a change for second place because Luca Magnoni has found a way back up ahead of Oliver Freymuth. We didn't see what happened to precipitate the move, but now Freymuth has got to do it all over again because the last time that we saw these two cars, they were a little bit separate from each other on track, but no more as they round the left-hander. They've got exactly 10 minutes of racing to go as they flash through. Now, what can the frame of do about overhauling Luca Magnoni? Also, is that going to be the opportunity that brings this man, the fourth place car of Claudio Giudice, back into play as well? Giudice in the Maserati. It's been there or thereabouts all weekend. It is a tough car to get working over the full 50 minutes, and that is possibly Claudio Giudice going to be the, the real technical challenge for him over the remainder of the race. Here then is Giampiero Cristoni in fifth place and Cristoni as you can see 15 seconds back from Giudice. He's also now eight seconds or so clear of Roberto Gentili. Just a question actually is whether Cristoni possibly with a fair wind could uh, begin to make things a little bit anxious for Claudio Giudice as we're on to lap 23, nine laps remaining. They're probably going to have time for four or so more laps, but a lot of time has been gained very recently by Cristoni. Blomstead there, still in 10th in a nightmare weekend for him and Marco Hellestangas, which could have big, big implications in terms of the points battle heading on to Mugello in mid-October. This is the battle which could have big implications for the outright race at podium. And then he also leads the ES class, the ES plus class, led by Pavel Lefteroff. As we swing through the left-hander on our way. Another lap ruled off. A drive-through penalty has been issued. Again, for whom we know not. I just wonder whether or not Oliver Freymuth is possibly settling for third here because Luca Magnoni has eased clear of the McGann. Frame of not currently in a position where he can really uh, do too much about him. At the same time though, Claudio Giudice is uh, 
That's the way back to Gianni Frazzi is the, the next obstacle. Luca Magnoni will arrive at his tail first, but I think, crucially for Magnoni, he's got enough of a buffer here over Oliver Framuth that the uh, McGann driver won't really be able to, uh, to pounce now. Claudio Giudice and Giampero Cristoni. That gap comes down again by about one and a half seconds. It's not really going to be quite enough, is it, for Cristoni in pursuit of that fourth place between now and the flag. Nonetheless, it's a pretty remarkable recovery drive. Same, really, full of a frame with uh, that contact with the number 10 Ginetta early on. Framewith has possibly just got through that peak operating window of the Michelin tyre. See, it swings around Hairpin into the left handers and into the pit. So it was the drive through penalty, in fact, for Oliver Framewith. Now, what was the transgression that earned Framewith that? Nonetheless, the drive-through penalty for Oliver Frame with hugely disappointing. It's going to promote Claudio Giudice up into third place and second in the ES Plus class. I just wonder what the other implications might be in terms of the progress of Giampero Cristoni. All of this, though, is further good news for Pavel Lefterov because whilst he has driven absolutely imperiously at the front of the field, he has also been aided and abetted by the uh, adventures and indiscretions of those behind him which has uh, served to, uh, to make a dominant performance absolutely insurmountable so that was the classification when they broke the timing beam but Framewith of course was in the pit lane at that point and so it might just be the case that Giampero Cristoni has been able to get the jump on for Framuth. We will uh, find out in due course when they uh, come through at the end of this lap. Now though in the late September sunshine here just outside Rimini at the Mizano World Circuit Marco Simoncelli it is Pavel Lefterov who is set very fair for a double win in the Euro Series by Nova. This would be his second double win on the bounce left her off sprints through across the line exactly five minutes remain and that is going to give us time for three more laps we may squeeze a fourth out i think it's pretty unlikely so for pavel left her off best part of 12 to 13 kilometers remains there's a little bit of a seesaw at the wheel and what Lefterov has been so impressive at doing all season long, certainly when we've seen him this season, has been managing those Michelin tyres just maintaining the, the heat in the tyre in the early stages and then pushing on late on whereas those others have possibly pushed a little bit too early on in the race and then found that they've, they've not had the car underneath them and they've really needed it in the latter stages of the race. Left off our race leader, second place is Luca Magnoni. Third, we have got Claudio Giudice up into fourth. Has indeed come Giampero Cristoni, so Oliver Framuth slipping down to fifth. There is a question though whether or not Framuth will be able to uh, jump Cristoni between now and the flag. You'd suspect on, on the pace hitherto shown by the McGann this season that is eminently possible. It's also good uh, battle brewing up for seventh place in the Giagua, just clear of Fugliani, Zanium. Blomstead, those four cars all covered by about seven and a half seconds. They are probably going to fall well short of laps to, to really work that one through because through the left hander now comes Pavel Lefteroff. He is about to embark on what, for my money, is going to be the penultimate back of the race. Through he comes now. And Sprints along the start of the straight immediately ducks onto the brakes as he flicks through the, the left right flip flop at the chicane. And again, no traffic concerns here for Lefteroff. This is just when he will be listening for 
every gear change in that Lotus 4 and making sure that the car runs without missing a beat, driving within himself, driving within the car, but at the same time not backing off to the, the extent that he could have that lapse of concentration and then something could go very, very badly wrong. Instead, Pavel left her off. This is, uh, he will hope, a bit of a victory run through to complete what has been almost a perfect weekend. He didn't get pole position for race one. Thereafter, he has been the class of the field and the man to beat as he runs on to the back section of the circuit. There you see classification actually the Oliver Frame with not really making any inroads into Giampiero Cristoni. The only couple laps remaining it might be that Cristoni is going to hold on here for fourth place. Which uh, there'll be a degree of irony given that Cristoni would have arguably finished higher up the pack had it not been for his co-driver Mark Spekvoss making contact with Oliver Freymuth in the early stages. Pavel Lefterov certainly not really letting off the pace. Now here is the battle that we were looking forward to. It's Guagua just clear of Sandro Fogliani and then as well Manuel Lozani. Zani who was caught in an early instant with Marco Heather Stangas hasn't really had the car underneath him to, uh, to recover much thereafter. Berto Gentili ahead of the queue. Frederick Blomstead is at the rear of it. It's these three cars running in very close contention. They've got about a lap and a third remaining as Fogliani contemplates a little bit of a look to the inside of the Ginetta. That isn't going to work out. Maserati closing right up onto Guagua's tail as the pair of them head into the hairpin then. Jinking to the inside, Fogliani looking for space for the left-hander. None forthcoming. And they swing through to start what will almost certainly be their final lap of the race. So across the line they go. And again, Guagua having to defend to the inside line. It means that Fogliani swoops around the outside. Lovely move that from Alessandro Fogliani. He gains the place. Moves into seventh position. And there is a look at the classification as they are on to the 28th. And I suspect a final lap of the race because here comes Pavel Lefteroff into the hairpin. He's just got the brace of left handers to go, but the clock is going to tick to zero before he gets to the end of the lap. It means that it's going to be. A magnificent double at the Misano World Circuit for Pavel Lefteroff, the Bulgarian Lotus Evora driver, swooping through the final turn. He weaves, waves to the team who celebrate on the pit wall, and it's victory for Pavel Lefteroff. He does the double in the Euro Series by over second place. Great drive for Luca Magnoni, and that is enough to give Magnoni the ES class victory as well. And then we will wait for Claudio Giudice. is the Maserati. Giudice has had another very solid drive today. The Maserati course team celebrates on the pit wall. Giampiero Cristoni wasn't a million miles back either, was he? At the checker flag, he and Mark Spekovos taking fourth position. So another very enjoyable weekend of racing in the Euro Series by Nova. And it sets us up beautifully for the final event of the season. That will be taking place in mid-October, the 17th and 18th of October, at the Mugello circuit. For now, though, it is Pavel Lefteroff who receives the acclaim and applause of the marshals and the crowd here at Mizano. As he heads around on his victory lap towards the... Part Fermé and Podium. Still lots of gesticulating on the pit wall. Just wonder whether or not Alessandro Fogliani lost a little bit of ground on that last lap, judging by the body language of Barry Baxter. Pavel Lefteroff and Luca Magnoni, they couldn't have asked for much more from today. First and second class winners, respectively, for pace setters in the season today, Oliver Freymuth and then Fred Blomstead and Marco Hellestangas, they have really had a, a 
little bit of a day to forget both of them, both cars caught up in incidents. Both cars also having drive through penalties. So let's have a look then at the final classification. Victory for Pavel Leftrov, second place Luca Magnoni, third Claudio Giudice, fourth Marks Bekos and Giampiero Cristoni, then Oliver Frame with him, fifth clear of Roberto Gentili, Sandro Fogliani and Barry Baxter in seventh, clear of Stefanelli and Guagua, and Zani in ninth, Hellestangas and Blomstedt only able to salvage tenth place and a fairly distant tenth place at that. So some brilliant racing from the Euro Series by Nova. Thank you very much for joining myself, Ben Evans, here in Mazzano this weekend as Pavel Leftorov rolls into Part Ferme. He will be short joined by the rest of the Belavto racing team and they will be very much in a mood to celebrate. Already the, uh, the door is open. Congratulations are proffered. Have a left off as he gets unhooked by the mechanics and then will be out to celebrate. Second place for Luca Magnoni. We didn't see Masters of Magnoni today, but he drove superbly well. And for Claudio Giudice, an excellent third position. Well, Pavel Leftroff, certainly a name for the future. The way that he has... Uh, really been one of the star drivers in European GT4 racing this season and has been so spectacular in the last two events in the Euro Series by Nova. But he is going to be somebody to watch for in years to come. Let's take a look then back at the highlights of an excellent race and it was Leftroff who got the jump from pole position. Also it was a very good start from Claudio Giudice which meant that as they went into the first turn, it was left off who led it from Freymuth and Spekovas and Giudice. Thereafter, it all got a little bit busy. Manuel Lozani tipped into a spin by Marco Hellestangas. Hellestangas a drive through penalty, and Mark Spekovas won a drive through penalty as a result of that contact with all the Freymuth. Spun them again well down the order. Spekovas then set about fighting back. Savoyo Sonev had a huge moment front of the recovering Manuel Lozani. Also looking very impressive with Stefano Stefanelli but he was just a little bit too anxious to find a way past Roberto Gentili and ran wide. Once Giampiero Cristoni took over from Mark Spekovos the progress of the 10 car continued as Roberto Gentili was dispatched fairly early on in the stint. As Leftroff led out front the real battle of the race was the one for second place between Freymuth and Luca Magnoni. It looked to all intents and purposes, as if McGann was going to do it, but a drive through penalty for Freymuth, Moti Magnoni. So it's a double victory in Mazzano for Pavel Leftrov. He has utterly dominated the weekend. Second place and ES class honours for Luca Magnoni, and a fine third for Claudio Giudice. Just reward for an excellent weekend's racing at the wheel of his Maserati. So Leftorov and the Belavto racing team celebrate as the Euro Series by Nova sets its sights on the sixth and final stop of the 2015 campaign at the Mugello circuit. For now though, some very happy drivers about to be announced onto the podium after they have had some rehydration. Don't forget, do visit the Euro Series by Nova website, www.euroseries.org, where you'll be able to find out all about all the news and insight from the Euro Series by Nova and be sure to join us on the 16th and 17th and 18th of October in Mugello. The race days are the 17th and 18th of October. We will have all the action for you as soon as we possibly can. So it's been an excellent weekend of racing in Mizano. Night race in race one, perfect conditions for race two. It was Claudio Giudice who finished in third place. Luca Magnoni was our runner-up and Pavel Leftrov has been our double winner in Mazzano this weekend. 
So as we head on to Mugello in mid-October, it means it's time for myself, Ben Evans, to say thank you very much for joining us this weekend, and we will see you in Mugello as the Euro Series by Nova season comes to a conclusion. <laughs>